Ghost Month, the time in which the gates of heaven and hell open, allowing ghosts and spirits to visit the mortal world falls on the seventh lunar month each year. During this time, many Chinese people will use the opportunity to worship and pray to their deceased ancestors and relatives, while remaining acutely aware of not breaking certain taboos so as to avoid pissing off the spirits and, in turn, bring themselves endless bad luck. Unfortunately for the uninitiated, taboos during this time can be downright weird. So it would probably behoove us to brush up on what not to do, lest you want to become the plaything of a malevolent spirit for the rest of your days. With that in mind, here are 10 definite no-nos of Ghost Month. Number 1. Don't hang wind chimes in your bedroom. Did you know ghosts are easily beckoned by the sound of wind chimes? Why exactly you'd have jingly jangly wind chimes in your quiet, restful bedroom in the first place is another question entirely. Number two, don't hang your wet clothes out to dry outside after dark. Ghosts are also really attracted to the shape of hanging clothes apparently, given that they have a penchant for trying them on or even borrowing them from you. It's just like how your sister is always borrowing things from your closet and never bringing them back. Number three, don't pluck, wax, or shave your legs. One of the kookier Chinese proverbs states one leg hair can defend three ghosts, so it's recommended that you grow nice, thick leg hair, so the ghosts don't dare to approach. Number four, don't call people's names out at night. Word on the street, is that if you call out a person's name at night, a ghost might hear it, remember it, and then try to steal that person's spirit. So try to keep your ecstatic screaming to a minimum in the bedroom. Also, if you happen to hear your name being called out, whatever you do, don't look back over your shoulder or respond if you don't recognize the voice. You've been warned. Number five, don't lean against the wall. Ghosts like to rest against walls because they enjoy the cold, comforting feeling it provides. That makes wall leaning a no-go for the rest of us, though given that if you lean against a ghost leaning on a wall, you too might get haunted. Number six, don't pick up any money, coins, or red envelopes you find on the road. Just as with other ancestor-related holidays, people will burn money as offerings during Ghost Festival but that's not the only Chinese custom related to money during this time. You must also resist the urge to pick up any coins, paper money, or hongbao that you may happen upon in the road because according to superstition, this money could be a dowry for a posthumous marriage. And if there's one thing that riles ghosts up more than being dead, it's a messy posthumous divorce. Number seven, don't put your arms around or pat someone's shoulder. According to Chinese folk legend, there are three torches or fires of life that burn on the human body, two of which rest on your shoulders, while the third is on the top of the head. When you put your arm around or pat someone's shoulder, you're temporarily putting out their fire of life. While normally this is okay, during ghost month, it will make the receiver of a good pat-down appear much more vulnerable to any passing ghosts, who may then try to steal their spirit. Number 8. Don't whistle at night. People believe whistling at night will draw the ghost's attention and make them follow you home. Number 9. Don't take pictures at night. If you take pictures at night during ghost month, you might end up capturing more than you bargained for while snapping an elusive specter might make you famous among the ghost hunter community, it is likely to really piss off the photobombing phantom involved. Likewise, don't play around with flashlights because you're likely to disturb the ghosts. And finally, number 10, don't leave your slippers pointing toward your bed because a ghost might follow the direction of the shoes, figure out where you are sleeping and join you for a nap. One summer, 
a young man came to Guangwa Temple, located atop Kule Mountain in Yizhou County, Shandong, to rent a room. It was his intention to pour all his energy into the study of Confucianism. On one fairly cool day, he left his room to stroll about the veranda of the temple and to admire all the many paintings and ink scrolls hanging there. While he was doing so, he noticed a young lady in white approaching. As she got closer, he saw that she must have been around 15 or 16, and she was absolutely exquisite. The scholar was totally smitten and, rather boldly for the circumstances, asked her from where she came. My home is just down the mountain, she replied. The scholar was familiar with the area and wasn't aware of a girl such as this living nearby, however, he didn't suspect her of lying. Instead, he fell in love with her love at first sight. They started a conversation to know each other better. Very shortly, they became husband and wife. The day they were wed, the bride turned to her husband and said, We belong to each other now, and we shall be together when our heads are white in our old age this evening, though. I must return to my family home, but just for tonight. Starting tomorrow, though, we shall never be separated again. May I at least go with you? He asked. No, she said. She insisted she must return home alone. Well, the young scholar, now the young groom, was disappointed, of course, but his bride remained unyielding. The arrangements would just have to be this way. So before his bride left to go back down the mountain, the groom gave her the white jade ring he normally wore. Let the ring be a reminder to you whenever you see it he said. Let it remind you to return to me as soon as possible. They walked to the gates of the temple. May I at least accompany you to the door of your family home? He asked. No, my family members will probably be waiting for me outside. It would be a bit awkward with you there, with our marriage and such. Please stay here and wait for me to return to you. He said goodbye to her and watched her walk down the hill. She never turned back. Before she had gone one hundred paces, though, she suddenly vanished into thin air. The groom was beside himself with fear and shock. He ran to the spot where his bride had disappeared. It was a fairly flat field that was on the slope of this mountain. He started scouring amidst the tall grasses, way into the darkness of night without stopping. And then it became just too dark, so he headed back to his room at the temple. Just as he started to turn back, he spotted a clump of brilliant white lilies in the vicinity of where his wife had disappeared. For some reason, he bent down and plucked them up by the roots and took the flowers back to his room. Would they somehow hold the key to her astonishing disappearance? Once in his room, he took the lilies there must have been one hundred and started to separate them. Out from amongst several stems fell the white jade ring. He then realized the awful truth he had been married to and in the intimate presence of a ghost. How he regretted what he had allowed to happen, but there was nothing he could do about it now. It was too late. Not long after, he came down with an illness. Within ten days, he was dead. <laughs>